In this video we look at physical and chemical equilibrium and we'll start by looking at physical equilibrium. So physical equilibrium involves a change of state rather than a chemical reaction. So here we have an example of physical equilibrium. We have a liquid in a sealed flask and the liquid will start to evaporate and as the liquid evaporates the liquid level will start to decrease. In the middle flask we have an increased rate of evaporation and some of the particles will start to condense, that is they'll change from a gas back to a liquid. In the third flask the liquid level remains constant and that's because the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation. So in the third flask the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation. This is dynamic equilibrium. The liquid is still evaporating and condensing but the liquid level remains constant and that's because the liquid is evaporating at the same rate at which it's condensing. And we represent a system at dynamic equilibrium by the use of this two-way arrow. Next we look at chemical equilibrium. In the reaction below an equilibrium exists between the reactants HI and the products H2 and I2. So here we have hydrogen iodide decomposing into hydrogen and iodine and the reason for this purple color is the iodine vapor. The purple color of the iodine will remain constant. This does not mean that the reaction has stopped. It means that the hydrogen iodide is decomposing at the same rate that the hydrogen and iodine are reacting to produce hydrogen iodide. The reaction has reached dynamic equilibrium. The rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Next we look at the characteristics of chemical equilibrium. The rate of forward reaction is equal to rate of reverse reaction. Equilibrium is dynamic. The forward and reverse reactions have not stopped but are occurring at the same rate. Equilibrium is achieved in a closed system where matter cannot escape. The concentration of reactants and products remain constant but not equal. At equilibrium there is no change in macroscopic properties such as color. And equilibrium can be re reached from either direction. Here we have two graphs of concentration against time. The graph on the left is for the reaction of hydrogen and iodine to make hydrogen iodide and on the right we have the hydrogen iodide decomposing into hydrogen and iodine. So on the graph on the left initially the concentration of the hydrogen iodide is zero and it increases to the point where we get a straight line and the hydrogen and the iodine they start at a higher concentration and the concentration decreases to the point where you get the straight line and this red line indicates the point where equilibrium has been reached and the concentrations of the hydrogen iodide and the hydrogen and the iodine are constant. So on the right graph we have a decrease in the concentration of the hydrogen iodide because it's decomposing into hydrogen and iodine and we have an increase in concentration of the hydrogen and the iodine and this red line shows where the concentrations of the hydrogen iodide and the hydrogen and the iodine are constant. So from these two graphs we can see that equilibrium is achieved when the concentrations of the reactants and products are constant. And this is an important point. They are not equal. You can see from the two graphs that the concentrations of hydrogen iodide and hydrogen iodine, they are constant but not equal. And the final point, equilibrium can be achieved from either direction. That is by hydrogen and iodine reacting together to form hydrogen iodide or hydrogen iodide decomposing into hydrogen and iodine.